Yo guys, welcome to my Trails of Cold Steel main quest guide, Old School House Mystery 2. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys where all the chests are and give you some boss strategies at the end. Stay tuned to check out my guide. So to start we want to go to the Old School House and then there's going to be a cutscene once we open the door here. So boom. So use the key. It's also going to progress the day, so make sure that you got all your other stuff done first. And then there we go. So we'll use the old school key, and then we'll go in, and then our group will get together. So for this one, you can get uh, like a little side character as well. Like a support, I guess is what it's called. So you can like tag them in and out and stuff. I never really use that this that much in this, but I'm, I'm sure you could. And they still get EXP. So once we get in, there's going to be a small cutscene here about you know how every month that it like kind of changes, and then they're kind of scared. And then uh, they've been hearing noises or stuff in here as well from it changing. And then they're just mentioning that we don't know what's past that door, and last time that it really changed. So. Let's go through the door, see what we got. It's going to be a big surprise. And it's going to give you a little bit of a, a guide on how to do the sport stuff. And then we're going to run straight through the door. But first we want to uh, link people up. So I just had Reen with... Uh, what's her name? And then the other two together. Is it Laura, I think? So we're gonna go through the door and then they're gonna be like, oh my God, this room is so different. Uh, there's an elevator in here. So we're gonna have to figure this out and Alyssa apparently is pretty good with computers so she'll figure out how to use it and then we will go up and down floors. So we're gonna want to go to the second floor when we get the option. So let's pick the uh, go to floor two and then see where this takes us. Nice little cutscene here, a little pan back. And then this is gonna trigger a small cutscene, I believe, and then we can go on to this dungeon. And then they mentioned that none of it was here. There's gonna be something special behind the door. And, uh, yeah, we will just have to see what we get. So let's uh, continue on through the door. Right. So after the cutscene, we'll run through the door and then we'll be here. So let's get some chests first. So all the monsters I tried to sneak behind, some of them aren't too bad, but the big robot dudes are pretty crazy. Like this one right here surprised me. And I had to run back and heal and then come back, but I did kill him. It's easier just to get a surprise attack on them. I was just fighting everything as I needed a little bit of EXP. And you need to build up your S breaks as well for a kind of like a mini battle. And the boss fight's kind of uh, annoying in here. So you go over here, there's going to be a monster. Try to sneak up behind them. These are the ones that suck. But if you sneak up behind them, they're not too bad. And then we're going to get a chest here for a floral bottle. I believe that's a good thing to equip because it prevents confuse and that's what this boss does is a lot of confusion. So put that on a character. I forgot to do it. I didn't even think about it to be honest, but yeah. So we're going to climb this ladder here and then we're going to take the path to the right first. This is going to have like the like mini fight area. I'll kind of explain what I did at the beginning and then kind of cut the second half of the fight out. But I'll uh, kill this thing and then... We'll get to the chest here. So you're going to have like four of those things. This is where you should have your S breaks filled. Watch out, guys. Because you're going to want to take out a couple of these right away. So I used Motivate. I don't know if it helps the damage of your S breaks or not, but I did it anyway. And then I just started using my S breaks to uh, kill the big... I was mainly focusing on the big guys for this. Because they can wall up you pretty quickly. So Radiant Blade will kill three of them. And then I kind of waited for them to group together. 
before I used uh, the flame one from Reen. I forget what it's called. But I started using Blessed Arrow. I had Motivate up already. I'm going to put Resounding Beat on everybody just to get everybody all buffed up. Heavenly Arrow or whatever it's called fills up CP as well. So it's good ways to like quickly just blast out your S breaks. It's pretty good. So this will boost her up my defense and give me regen. So that'll help. So I'm looking to see when they're starting to gather up. And then I'm going to use Rain's Villainy. Right here I thought was a good time, so I used the flame dash slash thing and uh, took out three of them. After this was over, I just quickly beat down the other ones. It wasn't too bad at this point, so that's how I did this fight. So boom, they're dead, and then just melee attacks on the other ones. So once we're done the fight, we're going to get the Reaper Quartz. And then now we're going to go to the other side. Because there's going to be one more chest we got to get. I'm just checking to make sure it wasn't there. So there's a spider thing here, and the chest will be right here. You get EP charge. And then I was trying to get the spider before he hit me, but I mistimed it. But killed him anyway. Now there's going to be a switch here we need to get. So there's going to be two switches in total. So this is the first one. It's going to kind of open up a way a little bit. So there we go. So then we're going to proceed going forward. And then there's going to be a couple more small fights. You can do them if you want. I did just to get some EXP and get some of my SP back from the, the other fight. And we're going to open up the second switch. And that will lower the stairs so we can get down there. And then we're going to run down the stairs now. And then I would advise to uh, go back to where the elevator is because we're right at the beginning now. And heal up real quick because there's a healing station there. So here's the door that we started with. And then uh, just quick here, hit rest, probably save it for the boss fight. So now we're going to head straight to the boss fight. So the boss fight's just at the end of this hall, so switches like brought that wall down and opened up the path to go this way. Jay, we're at the end. There we go, yay! We're at the end for sure. So we're gonna go forward. You can uh, heal on the right there as well. I didn't think of it at the time. So now there's gonna be a cutscene. It's like, oh, who's this big bad monster? This fight is actually pretty difficult. I died three times on it, so. It's no joke. It, you need a little bit of luck. As we're doing the fight, I'll kind of explain how I did it. So here's one of my deaths, just to show you. So we hit retry. So I tried a diff bunch of different strategies, but th this one I was focusing more on S breaks. But I wanted to keep one available because you will see on the third one from the bottom on the left has like a crit node. So I was saving some S breaks for that because one, the monsters won't crit. And two, I will crit. It's better if I have it than them. I don't want to die to that. So the attacks these things use is like a laser beam attack. And this is where you need that accessory. Because they will confuse you with it. But if you guys are all together. Then he can act. It's like a small AoE. So it'll hit all the people. And it can confuse them all. So that's one ability that they use. And the other one is. Uh, I forget what it's called. But it hits everybody on the screen. But it also lowers your speed and defense. So my strategy here was to kind of... So there I used the Radiant Dance from on the critical thing. So the enemy didn't get it, but I got it. And it just made it so uh, I got the damage instead. And once you use your S-Break, it will automatically give you the next turn. So that's kind of like how you do it. So I used that uh, Heavenly... Uh, Rain or whatever it is from Alyssa. I think that's her name. That fills up CP and stuff. And then uh, Blessed Arrow. There we go. That fills up CP and stuff. And then just keeps everybody topped off and and whatnot. So I was just do focusing on that. And keeping resounding beat up when I can as I was kind of using Elliot as like a support. 
and then Reen kind of as a support as well. So there's the first one dead. So once the first one's dead, the fight becomes a lot easier. Especially when they start going crazy with their screen wide damage thing. Right now, all they've been doing is like laser beaming. But see how now that everyone's all spaced apart, then only one person got hit instead of everybody. And like I said, it can confuse. So I'm using Flame Slash because it's on a crit, so it does more damage. That's kind of like how I was doing it. So right now, if an enemy got a crit, that would be kind of screwed, but we'll have to use a... Uh, I can't remember if it was Alyssa or Allison or or whatever for uh, the bow chick, but I'll just say the bow chick. It makes it easier. So I'm going to keep the sound and beat up on everybody. So here's the bow chick. So we're just going to use the Heavenly Arrow or whatever it's called. I believe the next turn I move her up closer to uh, Laura as well because her limit is worth it as well. So there's another beam. I'm really some There's the Crisis Cry is the area of effect one. So if all three of them are up, they just spam that and that can wipe your party out pretty quickly. Unfortunately, my crit's on Elliot, so I was like, you know what, I'll just get an attack and it gives me a link attack and just a little bit of damage. And then with Reen, I just, uh, I think I did a normal attack because I'm trying to fill up his CP. So I'm going to move her closer so she can get both of them instead of just one. And I think her attack comes back faster doing that as well. She's confused now with that little symbol. I think I had something on her that automatically resurrected her when she died. Kind of an interesting item, but probably save this fight. So here she is again, so I'm going to use Blessed Arrow. So that'll allow me to have my two more limit breaks filled up, so... I'm going to use one now, and then I'll use the other one when the enemy's turn is with the crit. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do here, but... I ended up attacking with him first, because you'll always get the next turn, so it's like, eh, I might as well get an extra attack since it's his turn too. So there we go, 1369, and he gets ignited. I tried using... Allison or whatever to ignite, but it didn't really work So I'm using heals here, and then the next turn I will use a limit because it's the enemy's turn with a crit But I actually went to the other one because it had more HP Because the other one only had 700. It's like I'm not wasting a 4,000 damage attack or 3,000 or whatever it is for 700 HP So here we go, so that I hit for okay 3,000 but it's better than the enemy getting that crit as well. So the I got pretty lucky with them just laser beaming too, which is nice. So since she's confused, she's going to hit one of my characters. So I'm just going to heal her back up again. She seems to be the target. It's probably the best one at this point, but it'd be nice getting her uh, ability to fill up my other guy's CP. But eh, it is what it is. So we got Blessed Arrow, so we'll do it again. There we go, that gives a little bit of CP and some healing, so now we got a crit. So might as well take out this guy. And now the fight's a little easier, and I kind of switched up my tactic a little bit. So for this, I uh, started using Autumn Leaf Cutter because it delays the enemy's attacks. And then it just makes it so I don't have to worry about his attacks as much. So we kind of just have to move. I was too far away, so we got to get a little bit closer. Autumn Leaf Cutter. Let's see how I kind of delayed him a couple turns. And it also like gave me the crit thing instead of him. So I'm just going to rebuff now. Just because there's one monster left doesn't mean I'm going to take it easy. So I'm going to move closer with her so I can use her buffs and stuff. And then I switched to uh, single target abilities with uh, this person as well. Pretty sure I started using uh, Armor Break or whatever it's called. I can do this. So she's got a crit, so I just play, like, whatever, I'll just do an attack. Do a little bit more damage. The Link attack, it's not a whole lot, but it's a little bit. And then we're going to use the Autumn Leaf Cutter to delay a bit. 
And then with Elliot, we're just gonna heal up. She was getting a little low on HP. I, I went with the big one, just might as well top him off. So here's our armor break. And the 500 damage. Get the terror off. And that's pretty much it for the rest of this fight, how I did it. After this, the quest will be done. You'll get uh, a couple items, I think. And it'll be like a big story thing once you exit the dungeon. So if you guys found this guide helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button. It'll help the channel out a lot. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a great day. before my blade.